My name is Alex Desume. I am the councilman for this area. Indeed, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you to District 4. This is one of our exciting, very wonderful projects that we've been working for the past few, few months. And I just want to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about the project. But before I do so, I want to recognize a couple of folks who helped make this meeting possible. Rasha, are you in the meal? Just raise, hi. This is Rasha, who's the director of our CRA, yes, yes, Rasha yes. Kamor. We have our deputy city manager who's here with us, Arthur Sori, who lives in this area. We also have um, our city attorney, Jeff Kazo, in the back. Awesome. And we have more folks coming in, but this is an exciting time for North Miami. It's an exciting time for this area. I have lived in this area for over 20 years. And over the last 20 years, I've only seen one develop, development going up, it's, which is a building, a storage building. So we got to change that. We have to change the dynamic. Um, I, I know more people are coming in, so I'm trying to, Ms. Brown, yeah, th this is open right here. So the dynamic of this, once I got elected, I wanted to do something to really facilitate and transform 7th Avenue and the idea of Chinatown came into mind. I know a lot of people don't know the whole concept. I do understand that we do have a lot of education to do, but we wanted to do the master plan interface before we start the education. So before we go on, I'm gonna educate a little bit about what the Chinatown project is, what the concept is, and what this meeting is about tonight. The project is a commercial phase project, and it's only from 119 up to 135th Street only the business corridors. We do not allow any residential in the Chinatown corridor. It's a Chinatown Innova Innovation District. What this means, we are encouraging a lot of technology companies, a lot of different, different companies. Do the city have land on 7th Avenue? No, we don't have land nowhere near 7th Avenue, so we cannot sell land to people. We cannot make money selling land to people. It's the businesses who are there now. We're gonna help them through this process with the facade and we are ready to invest as much money as we have spent in the other communities. This is a new day for District 4. This is a new day for North Miami. So we are going to invest on keeping businesses, helping them to con uh, conform into the new Chinatown program and also we ask new businesses who are coming in that they will follow the master plan. That's the important. Now let's talk about what this meeting is about tonight. This morning, I was asked, um, we need to have another meeting because there's a lot of people that wants to do businesses inside Chinatown because what's going to happen? All of the millions of people who are visiting Miami now are going to make a stop into North Miami to Chinatown. That's the idea. That's just it. Nothing else. There's no nothing. It's just the, the tourism um, industry. The Miami Greater um, Visitor Bureau is very excited. Um, I spoke to Connie earlier. Um, she couldn't make it, but that's one of the things that they are looking at. They want to designate this officially as the Chinatown for Miami. This is exciting. This will be the first one in the state of Florida. There are tons of Chinatown in the US. However, there are two types of Chinatown. There's an organic Chinatown and there's one that's done through legislation. The organic Chinatowns are the one in New York, um, San Francisco, Seattle, those where you have Chinese population that was there. As a result of that, they become, they enroll into just like you have little Haiti, you have little Havana, et cetera, et cetera. But Philadelphia, Houston, Texas, Washington, D.C., those are Chinatown that was done through similar process, which is through um, the legislative process. Um, and that has worked out so tremendously for those areas, and we want to follow the same guideline as, as far as the one in D.C., which the estimated number is over a billion dollars that they have in revenue. And we think that with the tourism and all these things that's going to happen, the new excitement, we have an opportunity to cease on um, the stuff that's going to go on. The other thing we must note, the Florida Department of Transportation has been talking to us. They are doing the entire corridor from Golden Glade up until 79th Street. They're going to redo the whole, that whole strip. 
And it just happened to be when this idea came, they came to us, and we were so delighted that's money that we don't have to spend because they're going to do it. And they really wanted some suggestion from us as far as how we want that, court, that strip of Chinatown from 135th to 119th. So it's very encouraging. The entire um, strip is going to be redone from Golden Glade all the way up to 79th Street. I think they're starting on 79th. And by 2021, I could say the entire project, and don't quote me on those dates, should be completed so you have that going on. So our part is going to be the facade, helping the businesses to redo and, and do the whole architectural part of Chinatown. This meeting, this meeting is for business, business owners in the area, interest folks who would like to do business, and mostly residents who want to hear to share your idea, okay. what this plan, how do you want this plan to be? What, do you, what would you like to see in this Chinatown? This is not a meeting for you to, I guess you could put some suggestion, but it's mainly to help guide the architectural firm that we have selected to help us do the, the actual master plan of the Chinatown. In the upcoming weeks, we are gonna schedule a meeting for folks who wants to do business we are open to whatever that you would want to do, and I think we, we are more than equipped to help you establish your business. It, um, we are looking for investors, and we are trying to get some Chinese investors, but let's just be clear. If you don't have any Chinese investors that's coming in, that does not mean that we're not going to have a Chinatown. It's just meaning that we don't have any Chinese investors, but we are still going to have the Chinatown because I think people are forgetting the concept is the more the act, um, the act the architectural part, the concept of the look and the feel of a Chinatown, and that's what that is all about. Again, um, I'm going to turn it over to the um, consulting firm to take it over and start the, um, the process. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm uh, Jim. You're going to be sick of me by the end of the night. I'm, I'm afraid that's the case. I'm also known as Fred the facilitator here. So I'm just emceeing, but I'm also professional, part of the professional planning team. Um, I'm going to be working with Debbie tonight, especially on the following. Debbie, um, what are we trying to accomplish here? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a lightning round. One of the things that we really like to do in meetings is to find out what your expectations are. A one word. Um, expectation of what you think is going to come out of this meeting or what you'd like to come out of this meeting. Anybody would like to start? So two minutes or less. This yep. is quick, quick. Real quick. Anybody would like to start? Tonight? What do you expect? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. One word. Uh, expectation. Business. Business. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Demographics. Demographics. Anybody else? What did I hear over here? Funding. Funding. What else? Anybody? Um, engagement. Engagement. Clarity. I hear that right? Clarity. Anybody else? Community. Community. How about you guys over here? You're kind of quiet. <laughs> Anybody have any? Green. Clarity. Back me up again. We had community after clarity. And then we had green. He ran out of uh, ink. Hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Value? Yes, sir. Tourism. 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 Got it. Anybody else? Oh, thanks. Community. That's a good one. That's Got good. it. There's two of them. Anything? Anybody else? Content. Content. Employment. Employment. Anybody Employment else like to add something? Yes, ma'am. Got it. Economy. Economy. All right. Economy, which is similar. Do we have anything else that you'd like to get the expectation well, out of tonight's see. meeting? And let's see, Debbie. Chinese residents. I'm sorry? Chinese residents. We had a demographics. I had culture. Waste management. Slow me down a little bit. Yes. Culture. I had, what else did I miss there? Wait. Chinese. Chinese. Chinese craft. We had and population, right? Chi right, and people, exactly. Chinese population and and craft. Okay. Anybody else? We have one back here for waste management. Waste management, Jim. I'm sorry. What? So let's tourism. Yes, that was a good one. Like that's part of our name innovation. of our district. Right. Well, let's see. Let's right. see if we can accomplish that. 
with our format tonight. So if you'll engage us a minute, I'm going to lay out some ground rules. How many of you go to city council meetings? Right? We have, we have important, we have agendas, we have rules, we have some basic rules of procedure. And by the way, a um, little show of hands of who else here tonight? How many local residents live inside the district? Local residents. How about live close to the district? Kind of close to, around town, okay? Business people of any sign, like real estate. Any kind of business owners. Any kind of business. Businesses inside the district. Businesses, Businesses in inside the, district. the district. Okay, thank you for that. Members of the media. Come on, you have to admit it. <laughs> Members of the media are, are covering us tonight a little bit, right? Right. And do you all realize that we're going to be across the, the, the uh, continents on this meeting as well? It's somewhat live streamed in China. And I don't know all the details of that, but uh, this is an exciting opportunity that we're looking at. I'm asking you all to be as present as you can. That's what our rules and tools are tonight. What does that mean to y'all? Will you kindly suspend the phone calls, the laptops, unless you've got to learn something, but be present. We're here to give you our all. We ask you to do the same with courtesy and your engagement. That's what rules and tools means. What does safe mean? If I dismiss your idea, Debbie, there you go again with that stupid idea. Is that a safe environment? I don't think so, but we're here to create a safe environment. And we can debate and have good uh, discourse and, and such, but we want to create a safe environment that's culturally respectful as well. And what we mean by that is I am not the pro on the, the um, customs of Chinese business people. I am not the pro on the customs of our Haitian communities or our Jamaican communities or others. But I ask you, if we step out and we don't follow something that is your cultural norm, let us know about it, OK? Because we're trying to be very respectful to all the cultures of our wonderful community. And we're here to share our time together as we do that. We have a number of resources around the room. Who's our staff in the room? Who's our wonderful staff of the city? City staff. Raise your hand. OK. Some more of the facts and figures. And Couple once again, who is our team? The consulting team from architecture to planning to civil engineering and the like. These are some of your resources around the room, uh, as well as some of the information we're going to give you. We're going to use uh, various tools as we go through and listen to what you have to say. And we live by a concept called full value. And full value, if I compress that down, is we're trying to respect and achieve your agenda while we also, that's your personal agenda, while we also respect that of the community as a whole. So know that we are committed to do that, to try and reach full value for everybody in the room. And we've got an interesting tool around here to, the reason I call myself Fred the Facilitator is my opinion doesn't matter here tonight. Mine is just to help direct traffic and keep us to our agenda and the like. Do you see those red cards on your table? You've got at least about five or so. Now, I want you to feel empowered when you have a really pressing matter that you want to bring up to us as a group or your table or otherwise, this is a way to get our attention. Now, I have to warn you, you can't be doing this every three minutes, OK? That's why there's only five per table. But we take special precedence to look for the red cards. And the other reason you're doing that is to keep us objective in our discussions. If you think we're doing something out of line, you let us know about it. We've got thick skin, so that's all good. That's what that means. We have to keep to our agenda. I apologize for us getting a late start, but we really want to do that as a group. We trust us that we can lead you through a couple of hours of master planning. We do this professionally. We're here to listen to you. And therefore, our agenda is as follows. These six simple steps. First, we're getting through that right now. Our inspiration 
and understanding, then master planning, then table presentations, taking a look at what we did, refine and reflect, adjourn. Oh, and by the way, we're going to send you home with an evaluation form. So you can, if you could tell us if we messed up, we want to hear about it. I want to urge you that this meeting is yours. We were trying to finish, this is going to be more like 6.30 onward, is your time. So you only have to listen to us for a little more time, okay? But I ask you to engage us on this agenda and try to help us move through it. Does all this sound reasonable to you in the room? Yes. I'm, I'm looking for some head shaking that that's a reasonable agenda and I'm looking for a verbal contract that we can stick this agenda. If we stray from it, I want to drag you back to it. I know we, a lot of us feel strongly about this subject, but I'm, I'm not seeing any dissent, so I'm going to say we have a good handshake. We have a verbal contract of us to move through this agenda. And with that, uh, part two, uh, Miss Debbie is going to take us further through that discussion. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, everyone, for coming. This is fantastic. I love seeing all the faces out here. Uh, my name is Debbie Love. I'm the director of planning with Keith and Snars. So let me say hi. Hi, everyone. In case I haven't formally met you. Um, as with Jim, you'll get sick of me because I'm going to be talking a little bit tonight. But my job is really to, to give you a little bit of uh, background, a little bit of things that we've been doing. Um, things that we've been finding out to date. Um, so if you bear with me just one quick second, I do want to share something really fun. They're watching us in China right now. So we just got notification that the, we are being, um, uh, th they're sharing the experience with us in China. So let me start with what the heck is a master plan? Well, a master plan is both a document and a process by which you come together as a community and have conversation, share ideas, share concerns, talk about your plans for the future, your ideas for the future. Three questions I usually try to, our team usually tries to get a community to think about is so what do you want to the, the planning area, in this case, this Chinatown district on, uh, on 7th Ave, to, to be? What do you want it to be? The second question is critical. What are your hopes, but also what are your concerns about the future of that area? And finally, what I think is uh, really important is communities have values. And what values do you want to infuse? So that's what drives the future. Because remember, this is all about the future. So a master plan really is three parts. One, it's the vision. What is the vision? The vision is what you all see for the future. But then you also need to have a set of goals. Now the goals are, what are you aiming for? What things are you striving to attain? And then the action plan component of it contains several things. One, it says, all right, what are we going to do? What actions, what strategies are we going to undertake to actually achieve the goals and reach the vision that we have for the planning area? It also has important things like all right, what kind of projects do we need to do? Who's going to be responsible for them? When are they going to be done? And how much are they going to cost? And I know that's important to all of us. And that's what a master plan is. So let's talk a little bit about this particular master plan area. Well, the district uh, is 93 acres. It's essentially from 135th 16 blocks down to 119th. Now the zoning that you have along either side of the corridor is commercial. It's, it's what they call C1. And C1 allows certain types of uses to go into that district according to your regulations. But also abutting, directly abutting behind the corridor is a um, set of parcels and zoning is called RO. RO has a 
lower height, so it becomes a, then what can go along the corridor. And if you'll see that the, all the residential neighborhood right directly behind that, all of that is taken in when we do a master plan. We look at holistically. We also look citywide because we have to look at the, the um, transportation circulation from the district throughout the area. The height along the corridor on the east side is limited to 55 feet. The RO district that abuts the single family residences over there, they're limited to 55 feet in height. I mean, I'm sorry, 35 feet I'm in height. Now the single family district has historically been 35 feet in height, but most of the structures there are one and two story homes. And in this district right now, the allowable uses are commercial and retail, so you're well positioned. And that's critical information for all of us to know, planners as well as you all and as the community. A couple of little pointers here, little, little tidbits of information. You're primarily retail as far as the uses. The highest percentage is uh, retail activity. Second thing is single family residences. We took a look at how many, what your square footage of all the non-residential uses are in the area. Take a look at that. You're primarily commercial retail. A lot of that is, a lot of the, the development in the study area is commercial retail, followed by government uses. You have a fire station and some other things there. This right here is about 22% of the community makes less than the uh, low end in, in Miami-Dade County, so when we're always, always looking at how to make more money, right? And we talked about jobs over here and, and bringing in um, opportunities for more employment and higher pay. We're kind of young. The median age is about 37. And we do have a, um, as you can see, we do have a uh, predominantly uh, black community. However, you do have 30% of the district identifies as Hispanic. I've asked since you We don't have a whole lot of housing units um, there because traditionally um, uh, it's just uh, yes. not been yeah. where Can homes have gone. But of those, huh? interestingly enough, you're Three quarters are actually owner occupied. Now that's different than many communities. It's usually switched in a lot of communities. I've asked Mark to as well, but take on the new. I'm going to rove as well because I'm here at five. So let's dig a little deeper. We've got 128 businesses in the district. About 850 people are currently employed. Now a lot of those jobs are in the restaurant business. Uh, followed closely then by retail, commercial, the but that miscellaneous is just a lot of which, different, which smaller coach, um, really businesses know. that are kind of lumped You're together. Them sit in? They make sure a comment. They want to comment. So, they so want to three things have to occur. Okay. One of the things we were asked to do, um, and you always want to do this when you're doing business. something unique like this, is how feasible is this entire idea? Yeah, yes. just put them on, on so there's a three-step process to doing that. Okay. Uh, on our team is a preeminent ec economic group. Their name is Fishkind and Associates. And they did th That's this particular feasibility China study for this concept. In addition to there are three things to look at. First, so how involved is the local government in this? That clock, does that clock work? What are so the current so real estate conditions? Is it big enough? Uh, where's it located? Uh, but the time to, and then what are the connections to the target market that this particular district is trying to reach? So uh, we'll take a, a, couple, a little a closer look here. Test, test. Well, the first question you ask is, well, is the local government involved in the process? Well, yeah. That's what you're doing here tonight. We're starting to work on this master plan. Does, remember I talked to you about the, the regulations? Well. Next question, is this particular district identified in any sort of plan? Well, yeah, it's actually identified in the comprehensive plan. Financing is critical. Well, the CRA is enabling this through other types of mechanisms that we'll talk to you about in a moment. So yes to all these three questions. 
Very critical to understand that. Second thing, remember I said we look at the real estate conditions? Well, is it, is it big enough to support some idea like this? Well, you've got about 93 acres, about 70 acres is developable. Some of the most prominent successful projects are much smaller than this. What kind of access? How visible is the area? Well, you've got three interstate interchanges and you also have the Grattany Parkway. So good access, high visibility. Now this third question is critical for everyone to understand what's happening here. In the Miami-Dade market, who knows how much growth is happening in Miami-Dade County? You're always seeing cranes, you're always seeing a lot of things going on. Well, this is high population growth. This is a much better location than Polk County, for example. They tried something called Excellent China. It was not an economic development district like this is seen to be. Rather, it was an attraction out in the middle of nowhere. They thought it was going to attract people from Disney. You have the right location because you're in an urban, dense area adjacent to Miami, in Miami-Dade County, where you have a lot of growth, a lot of population growth. So it's a very exciting opportunity. It's a perfect location for it. So, so what kind of plan do you have for infrastructure? Well, the master plan is going to identify that. And what kind of funding? Well, primarily it's going to be pri through private investment, whether it's international and or local, um, but it'd be through private development primarily. Private investment, I'm sorry. Then you have to take a look at, well, how are those connections to our target market? What are they? Well, you got some really great ones here, particularly for the international Chinese market. You got FIU with their hospitality management program. You have the Port of Miami, a lot of trade in, with China and Asia in general. You also have a location office of the American Detang uh, right here in Miami, one of seven in the country. And you also are, you benefit from the international visitors and tourism here in South Florida. So the first thread is this FIU connection. Well, as you can see, there's been about 1,400 Chinese students that have actually gone through the program since its inception. And about 350 students go through the program annually. Now, the Chinese government has certainly taken a great interest in promoting student exchanges and tourism into this country. A lot of Chinese uh, like to, uh, want to invest outside of the country. So again, another little thread. And the younger Chinese generation really are looking for some different experiences sure. than what it, and exploring the different new lifestyles that are out there. The second thread. Remember I told you about the Port of Miami? Well, about a little over 30% of all of the shipping that comes through that port is from Asia. Amazing. A, over a million containers of goods from Asia, particularly from China, since 2015 come through that port. It's growing. It's continuing to grow. 10% growth is pretty amazing. But the port has also planned for more for the future. They've invested over a billion dollars in infrastructure, including making the, the channel much deeper, which is critical to, for cargo. Um, the, let's talk about the American Detang. As I said, you've got, them, you've got their office right here in Miami. And only one of seven in the country. Amazing. And these folks um, cater for real estate purposes to uh, select clientele. On the, uh, so that's a, a, a great resource for your target market. Remember I talked to you about your international tourism? Take a look at how many Asian visitors have been in, into the Miami. 1.2 million Asian visitors come through there as of 2015. A lot do stay in the Miami Beach area. Um, 
But North Dade, if you'll see North Dade, there's some big chunks over there. North Dade definitely um, received some significant visitor stays as well. So what we wanted to do is, as part of this, you have to do some comparison. You have to find projects that are comparative to what you're trying to do here to take a look at. Well, one of the first is that I was personally involved with is City Place. This is in West Palm Beach. Has anybody been to City Place in West Palm? Yes. Do you know that that started out as a park and, and has morphed over time to this? It's large. It's, it's about the same size as, as your project. We look at these things for specific reasons. So there's, a, there's reasons that we pick these particular um, uh, examples for you. They had a vision. They had a plan for it. They stayed the plan. The government actually was involved like the city is here in promoting this project, which again, as I said to you before, that's a critical component of these things being successful. Another one we took a look at is up, it's in Orlando. It's called Creative Village. This is actually a very themed project. Their theme is education, office, and creative studios. They've themed it. Now, what was important for this project is they created that theme and they stuck with it. They followed that theme through. It is breaking ground now. Uh, again, this was the former uh, Orlando Magic Arena. Uh, the government um, got involved with that, helped promote it, uh, helped to make it successful. And it is a good example of uh, success for what you're trying to do as well. Because you're trying to do a thematic economic development district. So we had to do a market study. We were asked to do a market study. Again, um, our economists do wonders. I just get to stand here and talk about it. Um, took a look at the three types of uses that are allowed in that district, retail, office, and hotel. And then we took a look, they took a look at what had been happening in the past, and then what was forecasted for the future if you did this master plan. There's a no, do nothing scenario where you just continue on as you're going now, or what happens with the master plan. Well, let's take a look at the retail activity. You see the blue line at the bottom? That's projected if you don't do anything. And over the course of time, you won't be adding much to what you have now. Because it's built out. And you're not going to do anything. You can't add really too awful much to, into the mix. Uh, so you're not going to get more jobs. You're not going to have that great employment base because you're limited. And yeah, I, I, think it's, it, I, I think I say it a little bit later on, it's only about 26,000 square feet that you'd get in the next 20 years. But if you look at the top red line, yeah. this is what happens when you create a plan where it's an attraction, where people have some place to come to, where it's desirable, where it is themed, where it is interesting, an exciting place to come. Is there right now? Let's face it, it serves, it serves a purpose for bringing business, people that want to go there, to live in the community, but it doesn't, it's not an attraction, a place for people to come. I'm, it has great potential, and our architect's going to talk, share with you what he thinks the great potential is. But with the master plan, you're looking at a 600% increase in retail activity in that area. Retail activity. Oh, and let me back up to this. Remember I told you about 26,000 square feet? Well, now you're looking at a demand for about 218,000 square feet of retail. You'd need that because you need, it's going to stimulate that kind of activity. Office. Do you know that in the last 16 years, you've added zip square footage for office in the area? In 16 years. That's kind of why that is a flat line there. We anticipated to kind of continue that, that same path. But with the master plan, it would be about a 1,500% difference in office demand. That's going to result in over 260,000 square feet of new office space that can be um, absorbed, what they call absorbed, used. 
Hotel? Well, interesting enough, you have about 60 hotel rooms right now. Um, and the, see that circle around there? That's what's called the North Miami Area Market. And that little square in the center is that little linear square in the center is actually the district. Well, if you look at all the red dots, that's primarily where all this new hotel development has been going since um, 2005. Uh, we've not gotten any new activity here. But if you've got an attraction, if you've got a place where people want to come, then you can absorb three more, 300 more hotel rooms here. Now, we do anticipate it being like these, you know, boutique hotels, 80 to 100 rooms. Not a big convention center hotel, but something like that. So let's, to close me out on this interesting piece of this, you've got about 800,000 square feet of existing development in the district. Remember I told you you're going to only add about 26,000 square feet if you do nothing. If you continue the same trajectory you're on, that's where you're going to end up. But with the master plan, you're going to have more open space, more, more gathering places, more civic areas, more density, more height, um, more development, about a 50% increase in building space itself that can be occupied. Now, just a reminder, this growth is going to come through two things. One, new development, but also an enhancement of existing businesses. You're going to want to plow money into your business. You're going to want to, to make it bigger because you're going to have more demand. People are going to want to be there. They want to come there. So it's an enhancement. It's a joint thing, new and enhancement of your existing businesses. I, I so just thought it was my, uh, now that you heard me the, give the, I tried to make this interesting. I don't know how interesting it is, but I tried to make Dan, economics interesting. And Sam will tell you, that's kind of hard sometimes. But we wanted to share with you what we thought was I mean, some, some point, critical information of a, the would, difference between what happens at least say if it. you stay this, the course okay, you're I'll going ignore, now I'll ignore it. Maybe versus you, ignore you create a master time, plan, an exciting, had, interesting place to go. We all know terrible things can happen. People will come. Okay. You have the market. Okay. You have okay. all okay. the okay. things yes. available yes. and ready to go. The, you this master plan from. will help you get there. Now, we are listening to you. Beyond the conversation good, good, tonight, good yes we'll have a follow-up meeting that we'll be presenting to you all later, some results of your work tonight. But in the meantime, we encourage you, go to the project website. Besides being a really cool I'm going to turn it over to our inspiring architect, Kale Hu. Ah. Okay, thank you, Debbie. Um, uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ka Lehu. I'm the design principal of Lehu Partners Architects. Uh, I'm very honored to have been uh, selected to work with uh, Keith and Snarch in this very exciting project. Not only really exciting, but it's it really culturally and, and, uh, and urbanistically unique. Uh, my, my, my mission tonight is to present to you not so, not so much a, de a specific design, but also as a tool to, to bring every, every one of us into a same platform as we move forward with think out this, this, this piece of property. Uh, <clears throat> and <coughs> and the, one of the things that is important to, to, to us as a design team, uh, we, we would like to put in this, this, this quote that uh, when you build a thing, you cannot merely build that thing in isolation, but it must repair the world around it and within it. So that's the larger world, world at that one place become more coherent and more whole. And the thing that you make is place in the web of nature as you make it. And this is not only the physical, but also the culture and the emotional. And I, I, we heard it before, people say community, demographics. So that's. Uh, in our research, uh, going to this project, we're excited about finding the attributes. A little bit closer, can be heard in the back. 
uh, we've found the attribute that, that quite unique. It's a confluence of culture, heritage, that we're talking about, you know, thousand years of China culture, talk about culture of Haiti, culture of, you know, so there's a, definitely a common thread and the shared culture responsibility, you know, the family, important the family, hardworking, resilience, and efficient. And the, the, uh, the, the unique skill that we share is to, to do more with less and, and a sense of community and a shared future. So we were talking about that. Uh, and the theme for this master plan is to celebrate China, Chinese culture, are an innovation and to demonstrate the sense of resiliency uh, at the North Miami as a community moving forward and also base our design on a very strong pillar of sustainability. And creating a sense of place that include aesthetics, art, and architecture integrated fully. And, and with not, not, not a not a, a, a Disney kind of thing, but it, it had to be authentic. <clears throat> so in, consider the, 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 the larger hall beside, beside the, the China town district, uh, we also would like to kind of sensitize you to the bigger community as a North Miami uh, that have connectivity, a, a business friendly, uh, sustainable infrastructure, and also very importantly, is the storm water management uh, and how to roll it into a a, a, a unique uh, urban amenity as a framework for for good urban design. Uh, <clears throat> and one of the thing that that impressed upon us by by the uh, the steering committee is the notion of of a sponge city, so you will see it. You know, we we would we would like that to to, to be a, a, a theme. And again, this is not 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 a a design per se, but it's just a way to illustrate the territory and ask you uh, questions and uh, stimulate discussion. And we will take your idea and, and we will bring it to give it expression and and take it to the next level. And to this cell supplies, I will go very quickly. Um, <clears throat> this is New Orleans. And the three diagrams at the top, the first one is what used to be before it developed. And then throughout the 50, the 60, the 70, it becomes the middle diagram. And after the storm, right now the, the city is going back. To, to how to deal with it. And this is Miami, Florida. And this is our, um, the images that we collect uh, from China, from elsewhere, just to give you a sense of, of, of where other cities cope with it and, and thrive. And what are the culture parallel between China and, 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 and Haiti is that things has two aspects to it. One is the physical, but also it has the metaphysical aspect to it. So designs that have meanings and, and symbols. This diagram, there's a, you see <clears throat> the notion of of the cosmos has the relationship, has electricity, and the, you know there's a vernacular called feng shui, and if you see it, it, it reflect in, in urban design, not only uh, in, in China but elsewhere. The, the first uh, well, the, the first diagram is the um, the historic Shanghai plan, and it evolved later on 
uh, and the one in the center is a diagram of, 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 of you know, the function. But the one to the, the upper right-hand corner is the city of Paris. So you see a lot of parallel and, and the thinking of how to make a good urban design and become beloved space, but that has that, that really a special energy over time. It should be a place of multimedia aesthetic, art and architecture. This is parallel to I-95, and I think taming I-95 would be a major task. Okay, this is the last part of, of the, the presentation, and I would say that, by the way, and this is, I like to spend a few seconds about the common thread that we discovered. It's a like, it <clears throat> very special and unique cultural DNA of North Miami Chinatown as a district. There's a confluence of heritage and culture that I think it, it would be a, a deep source of inspiration for design. <clears throat> we have Confucius and Laos, and you see the wisdom of these two philosophers permeated through, through the Eastern thinking, not only broad but also deep. This is, and you, and you will see the parallel between the culture. This is Dr. Sun Jatsen, which is the father of modern China, who unified China and bring it out from the feudal system into the modern world uh, before it gets split again. But he's, he's the, that we universally love. His monuments exist in mainland China as well as Taiwan. Another thing that we discovered, John James Audubon, just uh, Audubon Society. Audubon, James John Audubon was born with a native son of Haiti before it become, become Haiti. And Francois Macadal, he's a uh, revolutionary hero of Haiti and become his first president. And they share, they share the, the, the visionary big idea, original thinking, hard work. And then I, I, I want to paraphrase uh, uh, a, a US president. Uh, I think he said something like, in this country, uh, your origins is less important than your destination. I think Ronald Reagan said that. So I think with this, 
it, it meant or less that you come from China, you left China, you left Haiti, you left Vietnam, you left Korea, but you come to America, you're part of an ideal thing that, that is in a state of flux, and it's up to you to define it. And here, this is our founding father. It's another revolution, revolutionary, just like the Haiti, just like uh, Chen Jasen. And this is culminate into our experience. I think this experience is, is a story of immigrants. And, and I just want to, to, to amplify that. And in closing, I want to leave you with another quote from another great architect. Make no small plan, for they have no magic to stir men's blood, and properly themselves will not be realized. Make big plans, aim high in hope and work, remembering that a noble, logical diagram, once recorded, will not die, but long after we are gone, be a living thing, asserting itself with ever-growing insistence. And our job here to work with you to get idea to build an enduring master plan. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Ka, I hope was that a little bit to think about? Yeah. Just a little bit to think about. Um, I, I hope you know that we have an international uh, treasure here who should be a resource for you. Um, he's taken us around the world and given us so much to think about. I know that was overwhelming, but it gives you just a glimpse at the depth of thought. Um, that he has put into this tonight. He, I'm sure he's happy to have some side conversations with you, um, but those of us, us in the design and, and planning world uh, can see that inspiration for vibrant urban areas and many of the things we're trying to ch achieve here. Did we lose the, um, who's, here we go. Um, would somebody cue me up on the, so the next part of what we're going to do, we promised you that this is your meeting, and that's what I'm going to guide you through right now. Um, first, I want you to think back on what is a master plan and what we're looking for here. And then we're going to work table by table uh, to basically assemble your ideas that we can take back to the drawing board and chew on and cogitate. Uh, and come back in a later meeting to fledge a master plan. By the way, I reminded you of how we want to operate, right? We said, what's our... We said that... We said that we had some basic rules and tools that we're trying to work with, right? Let me um, come back. It won't reverse. Let me get you back. So basically, um, each table will think about right now, you haven't gotten a chance to know each other much, but at each table, we'd like to, you to basically self-select a kind of a coach, a coordinator, and ideally a spokesperson. They don't have to be the, right, the same person, but we would like you to work with each of your tables to come up with that person uh, who will be presenting your concepts. And as we're doing that, remember the things we agreed to before. We need to all be fully present. If you want to have a, a discussion, you can always take it outside. If, if you want to, because it's going to get real noisy in here for an hour. We, we want us to create that safe environment, right? Not dismiss each other's ideas, but just play them out. Don't, don't dismiss them right, right away. Create this safe environment. You're keeping us objective. You're using the resources in the room. And we're working through uh, part three right now. It's about an hour. And here are your assignments. One of the things you have at the table, can I address that in a minute? Yeah. Here, here are your assignments. When we go through the design process, we look at the parts of the pyramid here. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we look at them in terms of the physical design, the economic, social events, and those kinds of things. We know we've talked about the market already and uh, money and the rules that are there. 
These have been boiled down into opportunities and opportunities and challenges. And I call your attention to this at every table. You were handed that when you walked in. Okay? So this is the good work of your steering committee. Looks like this, and it's up on the board. So that's one of the things we want you to consider, is that good work that got us started toward all these opportunities and challenges. Next, at every table, um, I don't know how to reverse this. I'm very sorry. Is it on the opposite side? Can you reverse one? How far back do you want to go? Just, just one. I also want to call your attention at every table is the, the other, dig it out underneath the food. You see this one? It's called Table Discussion Guide. Everybody see that one? Okay, so these are the two resources that we'd like you to work from as, not to say, and chances are anything you're going to bring up is on here already. But these are to stimulate your thinking as well. And I'm going to get to this gentleman in a minute. Um, so, scribing, too, is what we're going to, go ahead, go ahead. And is this about process or is it about content or what is it? It is about process. Okay, allow me, allow me to get through this and, and then I'll... Um, if you don't mind, before you go through, because my question is... Oh, okay, okay. Okay, 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 sure, please. Please go ahead. Ready? Sure. Um, my name is Paul. Paul, Paul. Paul. So then, the room, the room can hear you. Great, great, thank you. My name is Carl, and I'm a resident here. Been living here for many years. And I have a question and a comment. And my question is this. When we first opened this presentation, it was a presentation and some numbers on the board that said it was 26%, it was, 27% uh, Hispanic neighborhood, and that it was three to one black to white. That doesn't tell me what the black population is. And I say black folks, I'm talking about all kinds of black people. Islanders, natives, all the immigrants, all the folks okay. in the room who consider themselves to be black folks and the ones who live in this community to be considered called black people. I'm okay with using the word black people and white people. I'm okay with that. So I want to say to you that the premise here this evening is that this is an acceptable presentation, an acceptable process. So I'll be very brief with my comments. <laughs> Here's what I'm troubled by. I've been living in many places across America. One of them is Boston, Massachusetts. And in Boston, is a neighborhood called Roxbury. We went through an identical development process. And I'm telling you that when it's all over and done with, because we did the same thing, we made the same mistake. We brought in an outside, third-party culture. We didn't look internally, nor did we require our elected representatives to look internally to develop our own economic base, to develop our own economic community. So here we have a, a repeat. Now, there was a reference made to City Place in West Palm Beach. So, so Carl, uh, let, me, let me make sure I got this right. Um, and I, I have to compliment you. This is outstanding input that your table could work with as you're fledging through these ideas. That's not my concern. Um, will, so if you give me a chance, if you give me a chance to complete my idea, because I have and a red flag, and the red flag was you're, the you're exactly right, and I just want so you I to... So I appreciate you giving me, allowing me to complete that without interrupting me, well, if you don't I, mind. I want you to get back, us to get yeah, back to I'll, our agenda We're going to do well. that as soon as I can complete my red flag okay. comment. Is okay. that okay with you? So I'm hearing... I'm Is hearing, that okay with the audience I'm if hearing, I complete my red flag? Is that okay? I just want to know. So if you don't mind, let me complete my comment, if you don't mind. All right. So what we have here is the infusion of a process that's been delivered to us that never went to public vote, number one. Never went to public vote, people. So the idea where it came from within the city, who the city leaders were, who said, this is a great idea, let's do Chinatown. Well, wait a minute, I'm a black man in America. I'm a native. I've been here for 30,000 years. You can laugh if you like, but the... Empirical information and evidence proves that I've been here for 30,000 years. So I'm a little bent out of shape when someone tells me in a neighborhood that's in crisis that I have a focus and concentration from my leadership that says I have to make the attraction a different culture. That it's got to be China that's coming in to make it worthy of people to want to come and stay. Now, let's talk about for just this, and I'll be very brief, but let's talk about what happens when people come to stay in this new attraction, this new Chinatown attraction, okay? Roxbury, when I lived there, was 98% black, 1.5% Hispanic, and a half a percent white. After the attraction came in, 
my neighborhood. Oh, just like City Place. What a coincidence, because I live there. I know City Place. The population demographics that I asked about, because we still don't know what the black population mix is here, but the, the demographics reversed. So my neighborhood in Roxbury that I could no longer afford to live in or buy into hmm, is now 96% white, 4% Hispanic. Ooh, gee, let's do the math. There's no black folks remaining any longer. And I'm telling you that if you continue with this process that is presumed to be acceptable to all of us who live in the city, you're gonna find that the population demographics, which is what's on the board here, the demographics, that's who lives here now, mm -hmm. and, if it's, and if it's a 70, according to the numbers, if it's a 72% black population of all types of black folks, it seems to me that we should be looking internally to use the cultural identity of those who live here and who have struggled through this and who are living through this hell. Because I think the, who's the fellow who did the, who's the, where's the architect? Where'd he go? So Carl, may I ask you a question? May I ask no, you a question? No, no, you may not. Let me finish, please. No, no, let me finish, please. No, you may not. Let me finish. Thank you. Okay, So the, you... The, 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 the fellow who made the presentation, he said that this, this, that, that your history matters less. What would he say? Your origin matters less than your destination? Well, it's kind of like some, one, of, one, of our, one of our leaders, and I'll close on this, one of our leaders said, right, <laughs> let me get this right, one of our leaders said that, hmm, America's dream is a black man's nightmare. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that we have to, we, we really have to be diligent about the process and make sure that we ask the right questions and whether or not the whole premise that's been presented to us that we have to lie upon China to save the neighborhood and to upgrade an area that's not growing. Zero growth, I agree with you completely. Why is that? And why are we not looking at the existing population and growing that? And on that, I'll close. Thank you. First of all, um, is this on? Yes. Okay, first of all, I am the councilman for this area. That's number one. And number two, this is my idea. So nobody gonna come here and disrespect anyone. That's number one, because I, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chung, I'm, Please. No, I'm not saying, I'm just speaking. Thank you. We have a presentation. Everybody's encouraged to give your opinion, and your opinion will be respected. However, just like they were talking about, and we have a, I don't want to go down the political route, talking about different cultures, I have been a victim as a Haitian American. I am not here to talk about a culture what's good, this and this and that. I love my African American brothers. I love my Haitian brothers. I love my Chinese. I love everyone. We need to remain on the point about this master plan. You could disagree. I will totally, totally get that. If you don't like what I'm doing, you wait at the ballot box when I'm running. You run against me and you vote me out. But this thing, I know that's right. Thank you. But this meeting, First of all, excuse me, ma'am, can you please let me finish? Can you please let me finish? Can you, can you, yeah, you could do whatever you want to do now. However, this meeting tonight, it's about the master plan. You could give your opinion. This is, this is on the master plan. However, the same thing I'm hearing that's what I was heard, the Haitian are coming to take over. No, this is not what this is about. This is about an idea, a vision for the district. I have lived here 20 years. I haven't seen anything. First of all, if anyone had an issue over the last few Sorry. months, my office is open. You are more than welcome to come and sit down with me and uh, um, give me your opinion. I don't have any issues with that. If you have something, you come to the council. You voice your opinion. I respect everyone. These folks are professional in District 4. Some of you, if you don't live in District 4, the way we do things, we do it by respect. So we're going to respect the folks to present, and respect going to be giving. Thank you so much. And if you have any issues, my office is open. Please come and see me. Thank you. So, um, so here's our assignment. And thank you so much for your, uh, all your input. Here's our assignment. Uh, we've whittled away a little bit of time, but we're going to try and drag you back on, on time. You see the tools that you have at your table. I, I, I mentioned those two handouts. Here is your assignment. We're going to ask you to produce, collect, first of all, your ideas on using, you see the big tear sheets on your table? 
okay? Here, here's an example. Here's an example of what your outcome should look like. Okay? On the tracing paper, you see up here on the board? You have the different issues down the side, like A, B, C, whether you think it's about events, it's about getting around, it's about alleyway. And then the second half will talk about a vision or a slogan that you would like to see for the area. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's number one, that we want you to work together as a table to produce. It might use the white cards. You see the white cards that you have? And this is where you'll pick a recorder for every, a scribe for every table. And we have our uh, facilitators walking around to help you. And somebody who will help direct the discussion as well. So that's number one. Number two is using the tear sheet that's already on your table and over the map, if you have any physical ideas, design concepts, sketches, roadway questions, or some, a question about the map itself, please use, you've all got markers on the table, right? You've got markers on the table. Call those out. Use that to sketch what those ideas are and use our two designers if you want an example of an entryway or you want some perspective. And who are our two designers who are going to help us tonight? Big, big tall hands. One's Ka. One's Ka. And where's Brad? He's out of the room right now. I guess he'll be back in. But those are the guys that could help you with design sketches, okay? So um, the other, so each table, let me come back to that now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review this. Let me come back to that. Your attention, please. And we'll break in a minute. So your attention, please. Your, your attention, please. Let me just finish this, and then we'll, we'll be free to work as our tables. I think you were inspired already to innovate, be bold, and come up with some new creative ideas if you can. Crazy ideas are okay. I'm skipping ahead on some of the examples. But we want you to have, you may have some dissent at the tables, but we would like you to have balanced conversation, be fair to each other, be courteous, even if somebody doesn't agree. But see what you can agree to. Okay? And then the second part of that assignment is to come up with a slogan or vision. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and get to work. You have about 50 minutes or so, and we're going to help out the tables as we rove around. I'm on five, you're on. So what happened to my table five? <laughs> to the microphone. Bang on it.
Come on, guys. Come back together now. Let's come back together. Thank you. Thank you. Your attention, please. Please come together now. Come together right now. Please come together now. Over me. We could do lights if we had to. Uh, there we are. Yes, please. Come on, everybody. It's that. time to let's present. Let's share these great ideas and concepts together with one another. Oh, shoot. What'd you do? Yeah. So what we've asked you all to do was put down on paper some of that great conversation you all were having and tape it up to the wall next to your table. Did you all do that? It's all taped up? Right. Are we ready? At every Are table, ready? it needs to be on the wall and you have a, need to have a presenter ready to go. Who's going to be the, up. Who's going to be the presenter? Over here. Okay. Come on, gang. Okay. So, designate your presenter. So. All right. Hold, hold on. Let's hold. Okay, everybody. I need to get your attention. We need to we need to halt the conversation so that you all can. Uh, I'm losing my voice even with a microphone. You got it taped up. You got your designated presenter. Could we have quiet, please? Could we have quiet, please? Thank okay. you so much. Could we have quiet, please? I, I need quiet for just a few minutes, guys. So here's our here's our process. We are now going to hear about the good work that we've done at all of our different tables. And I invite you to walk around the room while we're presenting. Okay? Because you're not going to be able to see what is on the wall. If you don't want to step up, that's fine too. But each table will be presenting their good work, telling us about their vision, about the components of the master plan. And it's our job to kind of ask questions, but we only have about five minutes per table, so we don't have a lot of time to do that. We're just going to chew on it, make sure we understand the ideas, and try not to be critical, but chew on them. Think about these ideas. Is that okay? Does that All sound right. like a reasonable a good? way to go? All right. So are we going to lead off with uh, seven? Seven. Number seven. <laughs> what happened to one? We're going randomly. So come on now, here, gather around if you'd like to. Gather around if you'd like to. And okay. my facilitator um, team, if somebody can give me a five minute call. This isn't real accurate, and seven's okay, but. Okay, so take it away, and what's your name, please? Hello, everybody. My name is Isabella Rosette. So, and, Isa, fantastic. And, and Alex, we're both going to explain the idea. And uh, Alex, they're going to team present here. How was your discussion? Was it heated? Was it spirited? Well, did everybody join really in? It was really nice. It was, it was a good. really okay. good conversation. Everybody participated, and we, took, we so, took something from everyone in this table. So, blow us away. So, What's the big, the big bird okay. picture Vi idea to start with? Vision. Enlightening our culture. Uh, some of the things that we saw here. That's for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the one I gave you. Enlightening our culture. So some of the things that we here. saw here is we believe that this gate should be moved to Seventh Avenue. Uh, that's one of the things. Uh, then we have. Monument lights, which are this one over here, this is the kind of main element of the idea, with lantern, a lantern in each of them on the top with a specific culture of people, you know, of the, the demographics per se of the area, perhaps reflected here, uh, or schools in the area. 
something that re kind of educate people about the area. But the main element will be this. Is, is uh, everybody getting that? Everybody know what a we, monument light is? A monument light? Monument light. Okay. And we believe that those should be alongside the expressway. Okay. We also, we spoke about uh, creating something like in here, uh, white sidewalks along 7th Avenue to accommodate bike riding and perhaps restaurant with tables and that type of thing. Uh, we also spoke about LED lighting throughout, um, as the speed limit to be slowed down so that people, you know, can actually uh, stop and chop, per se. Um, native tree, the water theme. We also re remind ourselves that we're not that far from 154th Canal, that we have water underground very close to us, not too far, and we have someone here I spoke about some type of French drain that could be used. So we bring the theme of water to give us a sense of place uh, in, in, in this um, district. Uh, what else? I think uh, Alex, you can take over. So hello. Uh, as part of the vision for enlightening our culture, uh, at the end of each of these alleys, which is indicated in the red, we also want to incorporate a lot of the Asian artwork and what is cultural to the many different sects of the Asian community. So in this area here, as you're driving through 95, people on 95 will also understand with the lighting of LED lights in different colorful areas in different times of the year will represent not only the culture here because it's already lit up in a nice way, people will understand that this is Chinatown. However, with the different colors, it will also represent the different uh, times of the year. Uh, it could be uh, for red, it could be for uh, Black History Month, it could be for any of those. Just like it was in New York when we light the entire Empire State Building. This is going to represent and not only become not just cultural, but universal. Yes, this is Chinatown. In the underpass as well, the color will not just go throughout the area here of 95, but also in the underpasses. These underpasses will also end up with LED lights here where they are, and like uh, Isabella had stated, the uh, French drains will also create a channel passing through here so that you'll also have a good walking distance. We all know that uh, Miami can get very hot, but not many people have the capabilities to be able to drive everywhere, so this will be a place with the right type of trees and landscaping to create that canopy with an Asian type of feel. Uh, bus stops will also be incorporated with the same type of design. Um, speaking to some of our Asian uh, commitment over here, we don't want to necessarily keep it all red but we do want to incorporate the feel in the architecture. Uh, someone mentioned also mural walls. Yes. Uh, alongside I-95. So the mural, mural, mural walls on I-95? Mural wall okay. attractions on uh, I-95, so, you know, people. Okay, you guys good? And I think at the end, all we want to say is that there's also going to be enough. We want to make sure, as landscapers and designers, we also want to make sure there's enough parking for everybody else. Parking, parking. Parking. One question from the group. Anybody? Anybody? Or is that? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Any of the people on this table club that actually reside in Do any of the folks here reside? And the answer is a couple, it looks like. Okay? Okay? Okay, and there's others who are connected. Well, let's. Thank you. Fantastic. So let's give a hand for enlightening our culture. And let's take it over here. We gotta, we gotta bring these guys back down a little bit since they're table number one. They think they're number one too. Ah, oh, they are. But they are table number All one. All right, we're table number one. And our concept is simply East meets Southeast, okay? Bringing the East to the Southeast. Now, what we believe is that having this uh, area 
from 119 to 135 is too limited. We believe you need to finish it and move it up to the intermodal, which is where what? Your tri-rail station is, your metro rail station, your Broward Transit com buses come in there, and your metro rail buses come into that area. It's a big park and ride, and so it could become the gateway, the gateway to Chinatown, okay? All right, now with it becoming the gateway to Chinatown, that means the tri-rail is bringing people from where? West Palm Beach. The tri-rail also connects to the red metro rail, and the metro rail goes where? All the way down to Dadeland. You're into the southwest area now, okay? And the southwest area has a busway, which brings people from Florida City to Homestead, from Homestead into the Dadeland area, up the tri-rail area, into the metro rail area. And where else does it stop? Airport. There is transportation, this makes it transportation from the airport into this gateway. So it opens up, it's limitless. Also, because there's a tri-rail station there, you usually access that tri-rail from where? From the north. It's the Biscayne Gardens area. You go into the park and ride, you go across the bridge there that crosses the highway state nine, but, on the other side of it, north of it, is Miami Gardens. They own the rails, we own the parking lot. We could open up that station and create access from Miami Gardens. What's in Miami Gardens? Hard Rock Stadium. Okay, the Dolphin Stadium. That increases the use for every major Thing that's going on at that Hard Rock State and all the football games, all those uh, college games that are held there, jazz in the gardens, we become the gateway to high entertainment where people, when they come here and they want to be entertained and see something different, they can easily get into this area. And so, what do you have? You have, the based on what they've put on seven, if you extend all of that type of building up to that area, you have a wonderful, wonderful uh, area. Plus, eventually, take it all the way down to 79th Street. Run it from 79th up to 160. Make the whole area a corridor of Chinatown, which is what? With I-95 there, I mean, people literally to have advertisements on I-95. Every politician, when it's election season, <laughs> finds a, a piece of pole or a fence or anything because that's a major advertisement on a daily basis. And what they spoke of in terms of those landers, how many millions of cars are going up and down I-95 all day long, every day, 724. It never shuts down. So. We have a fantastic opportunity to become relevant if we think the way the gentleman there said, what did you say? Exactly. Make Thank you. Make a small plan. So I see, I see as well you have something here about business diversity that you, for, you foresee multicultural owners, not only Chinese, um, the regional tr connections we got. Is there anything else from the group we forgot or we... Based on a what? Rickshaw, rickshaw, rickshaw paths, you talked about, and some other creative paths. things. If it's a 99 cent store, make it an uh, oriental motif there, and it just sells not, whatever the and market, the economics of the area can be made. Did you the same. have a, a chance to name your master piece? Yes, we called it East Meets Southeast. East Meets Southeast. A hand for East Meets Southeast. And we're on, we're on to table two. Uh, the tours over here have done something. I'm not sure what, they're ahead of the curve. Tell us we're, about why you're ahead of we, the curve. We're ahead of the curve. Um, so I'm just uh, the mouthpiece here. Um, I'm just, disclaimer, uh, so everybody knows. 
Uh, so the first thing that we, so we had a mix of people at our table. We have city employees like me, we have residents, we have business owners, uh, and we have people who are interested as commercial real estate professionals. Um, so our residents really wanted to emphasize, and it's why it's letter A for us, is the families in all these houses over here that are abutting the Chinatown. It's going to be, if it gets really busy with commercial areas, it could get louder, it could get more unsafe, and it could cause people to want to maybe rent out their homes or sell to others. So our uh, idea was to maybe incorporate some multifamily along the corridor to allow people who want to come be around this vibrant commercial corridor to actually live in there and not disrupt the folks who are already living there on the west side in the single family homes. Um, I know right now it's commercial, so that would be a challenge. But And then also to increase safety, police around the area, um, if we were to do something here. But I just our group just wanted to emphasize a little bit that it's not 100% pros. There are some cons maybe to doing something here, but we're not against it. Uh, we think it's it could be a good idea. But we think focusing on the families and the residents who currently live there is important. Um, we did uh, also like the idea because of the jobs it could bring for the youth. Um, the tax dollars they could create as well. Um, so then the next thing we had was, what was it? Oh, right, the greenery. So there's all these little baby alley alleyways along here, and we wanted to make those have green spaces, have trees, have uh, murals and paintings along each of these, and each of these little streets could have its own uh, character and identity, uh, maybe a certain um, you know, point in the culture, history. So we thought that would be good, so each street you went down had a different experience. Um, and then we also had an idea. Um, there's bridges here along I-95. And similar to group number seven, we thought it would be a great idea to have lights coming up from underneath the bridges um, that could change colors and that were at each of the bridges. That way, when people pass by on I-95, they're like, whoa, we're actually coming by something that's an experience here. So, get off and check it out. exactly, exactly. Um, so, and then, yeah. So, I think just our group. Um, oh, and then the center plaza. We want to do that, which I think is going to be incorporated into the master plan. But we wanted somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be right here. But we wanted one of these blocks to be a large open area where everybody can congregate. We can have music and a farmers market or something there as well, where people can come and just have a community place. Um, but uh, our, we, but just overall, we, we liked the idea of the economic development that it could bring and the jobs it could create and the construction. But um, I think our focus was, we just wanted to make sure that it was also conducive with the people who already lived there. And so the idea of the group um, was that maybe instead of a Chinatown, it was the Nomi International Arts and Culture District. But our slogan was "No Me Ahead of the Curve." Did I get it all? Are we happy? And okay. Group, is there any anything that he forgot? Anything that he forgot? One of, one of the things we talked about was, um, as somebody mentioned, probably um, expanding further north into the flea market areas. There was a couple of flea markets on that side, and to probably expand at least up to 140th Street, not up to the Golden Glades. But um, there's more, you know areas there that could be so, that, so that's missing from here yeah. expand north to flea markets okay right and in addition to um just commercial property like restaurants and 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 that sort of thing we're interested to know what kind other kinds of entertainment um, would be there like music and different art features all right so let's give a hand for the nomi the head of the curves the head of the curves and we're on to the yin yangs Hi, my name is Howard. I'm also, a Nomi, I'm also a North Miami resident and a member of Nomi Neighbors, just to let you know. So anyway, our idea is yin yang, feng shui, energy flows, and how we can uh, build a very vibrant corridor in our city. This is the highest land in our city. So um, we're, one of the things we're talking about... Step okay. away. Step one, away. One, <laughs> one of the things we're talking about, about the highest land in our city, which is why it is going to be developed, is that uh, we need in our city high-density, high-rise living 
to create proactively a city for the future. Because if we do not develop our city in a proactive manner, we will be reacting to being in a New Orleans situation where many of the people in this room may lose their homes. And we need to really get serious about this situation in our city and realize that if you live in one of the former tidal estuaries, you are going to have your house go underwater within the next five, 10 years, definitely. So we need to figure out how to move in a proactive and graceful manner rather than reacting through fear, proactively and gracefully build a city of the future. This is not just about Chinatown, this is about sustaining our city into the next century. Okay, so the grown-up conversation about that goes towards high-density living, and we need to embrace what is going on in other cities in the world, such as um, the west coast of Florida, where housing in a low-density situation is done in the air with parking underneath, so that when there is flooding event events, people won't lose their homes. This is what's being built in New Orleans now, after they had the situation with Katrina. We want to do this before we have a Katrina-type situation. Next hurricane, we will be in this situation. Okay, so skyscrapers and high-density development, we could anchor either end and have a zip line as a tourist attraction. And again, back to the Golden Glades, where we can have a bike path from Golden Glades. Golden Glades can have parking and can connect from parking at Golden Glades, can connect our city through to downtown through a bike path. Not only that, we can connect our city with a light rail from 7th Avenue from Golden Glades all the way down to downtown. People talk about trying to be Windward. Let's forget about Windward. Let's be North Miami and North Miami can anchor Golden Glades. That's why I live in North Miami. We're the best located real estate in South Florida. We're close to everything. We have, um, here we have the, the concept of texture with shops with uh, Chinese tailors, flowers, florists, food markets, cafeteria, fresh food and vegetables, street market. We have, uh, up here we have the idea of events. North Miami, I know North Miami loves some events. I could hear it the last couple of weekends, trust me. Um, we've got uh, Kite Festival, Dragon Boat Festival. Dragon Boat Festival relates to building canals in our city. If we build more canals, we mitigate more water, we can have a Dragon Boat Festival and have people with Connect connectivity to the water, something we should promote in our water, is connecting our residents with public green space on the water. And that's what we can do by becoming the, by, by becoming the Venice of, the, the Chinese Venice of South Florida and become a city on the water, embracing the water in a proactive manner rather than being fearful of what's coming with climate change. Um, so back to the festivals, you know, we can have uh, Chinese New Year, Tai Chi, uh, sister cities, Asian markets, um, food and wine festivals, you know, really bring an international flavor to the city. Um, in, addition to, in addition to that, what am I missing? Um, we kind of have two slogans, where we were yin yang, and my other one is, you know, we banned the pesticides, I say come visit North Miami, the real Miami, and we can embrace our, our natural wonders like Olita State Park, like Arch Creek, like uh, uh, Enchanted Forest, and we can capitalize on these things that we have in our city and become the ecotourism capital of South Florida instead of trying to be windward of graffiti. And what we can do with Chinatown is to develop it in a way where North Miami and Chinatown can show leadership and stewardship and guide South Florida towards how to use green infrastructure to sustain our city manner rather than reacting to climate change. Um, so it's not just about climate change, it's really about an integral th thing about sustaining our city into the future with light rail, cable cars, we could have the uh, horse and carts as a tourist attraction. You know, we can say, come visit North Miami, the real Miami, and embrace our natural uh, wonders of North Miami, and embrace the texture, embrace the restaurants of the diverse cultures of North Miami, because it's not just going to help Chinatown to bring more people to North Miami. It's going to elevate the Haitian restaurants, the Caribbean restaurants, the, the, the uh, El Salvador restaurant that just opened. It's going to lift everybody up. I think, did I cover everything, Andrew? With the stuff. And group? Is that right? Did he get it? Did we get it? Did he get everything for, from your group? Chinese entrance ways, pagodas, uh, Chinese gardens, uh, maybe a mini Great Wall. So item D, okay, okay. And we can theme the Wall of I-95 as our own Great Wall of North Miami. Well, let's give, okay, so you, we're out of time. We're sorry. We, give him a hand.
We're now going to hear from, well, what do we call you guys? Uh, transpiring Commons. The what? Transpiring Commons. Transpiring columns. Okay, dig it. Commons. I'm, commons. I'm, I'm, commons. Commons. I'm sorry, I can't hear. You. Take it away. Take well, it good away. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm a resident on this side of town, and pretty much our main focus um, for the for the master plan was focusing on circulation um, in the area. Uh, as a resident on this side of town. Um, the, the route, the corridor is used a lot, not only by our local residents, but also people that bypass from Broward to go into downtown and back and forth. So it's, it's very important to keep that circulation to make sure uh, we don't uh, get congested. So some of the things that we thought uh, and we brainstormed and so on is um, long term wise, build garages. Um, by the by, the entrances of uh, 119 and 135th Street, and maybe put one in in the middle. Uh, we also thought about um, having a trolley running just in this area from north to south, and having multiple stops. Uh, we discussed about having wider um, sidewalks, uh, so then um, people, you know, more for. Um, more people to walk through, but also uh, give opportunities for restaurants and other businesses to have um, outdoor seatings or other types of, 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 of venues. Uh, we also suggested that we wanted um, for the buildings uh, throughout to have access to parking. So let's say people don't want to park at the parking garages because the parking garages are is something for long term, it's not something for now, but to, to use the alleyways as local traffic for um, for people to park right next to the restaurant, to the offices they want to uh, get to, and, and so on. Uh, we talked about build to the line, so um, that's something that's already um, put into into the city um, zoning code. Uh, but we just want to respect that to, to give opportunity uh, for people to to maneuver. We also talk about pocket parks. Pocket parks are pretty much our small small parks. And we did identify that these pocket parks should be built on the west side of the corridor for two reasons. One, for the local residents to benefit with the uh, parking uh, for the park, but, um, but also to provide a buffer zone um, between the zoning of the commercial side and the, and the residential. And I think, um, anything else I'm missing? Yeah. Table, you good? Uh, we actually received a comment from WeChat um, all the way in Shanghai. Um, the suggestion was for more education and emphasis on the, ben uh, the economic benefits to the area for both indigenous, local, and the Chinese cultures. So thank you. All right. So a hand for table three. And I'm hearing, to be respectful of all the good work we did, just try to add on any new ideas that we haven't heard before, okay? We're, trying, we're being asked to expedite and folks are urgently wanting to get out the door. So take it away, Kent. Great. Uh, hello? Yes. This is live? Okay, great. I'm representing Table 4 and in, in, in addition to some of the many great comments that we heard today, uh, I'm representing my table and the residents that were at the table. So what they talked about was catalysts. They were big into catalysts. What's going to get people to the Northwest 7th Avenue Chinatown from the beach. So we started thinking about types of uses. Um, we wanted to create an active nightlife, so we thought about bars, clubs. They also thought about um, connecting Northwest 7th Avenue to the Sunkiss Grove neighborhood. They also talked about how do you integrate um, the local universities, FIU, Johnson & Wales, Barry University. They started talking about uh, uh, affordable, uh, uh, student housing, and then possibly incorporating a uh, grandma or um, uh, accessory dwelling units within the houses in Sunken Scroll, and also possibly uh, adding, uh, increasing the building height up to uh, 40 feet. They also talk about uh, green trails, complete streets, uh, just activating the area, adding in um, public art, maybe a water feature, something to make the corridor distinguished. So Catalyst was the big key here. The slogan we kind of used was, um, uh, I, it's at the top. Here we go. Traction to the seventh avenue. Traction. All right. You'll add that to. Let's take that up. Tape, tape up your slogan. All right. Thank you. So, Miss Boy is going to summarize five. Dubois. Oh, Dubois. Dubois. All right. Summary. 
going to have to be uh, a thematic and closed, if you want, defined with boundaries well defined. And the first thing we said, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Because of the camera. Oh, they, they want to see your beautiful face. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we want, we definitely need to have a, a community to be alive has to have people living in it. And therefore, we are thinking of some mid-rise, first floor retail, second floor offices, and third and fourth will be people living in. Otherwise, you end up with a ghost town when the lights are off. Walkability, very important. First, you need anchors. You have to have people, businesses that people go to, even if they don't go inside the community for, you know, peaking. And uh, we're talking in terms of it could be uh, food. Culturally, Chinese eat fresh. And I was in China, people eat fresh stuff. They go to the, to the market daily, if you want. So we want to talk to people like Whole Foods and say, hey, we got this idea here in North Miami. You open one or we'll find someone else to. It'll be typical Chinese food. Then you have cultural anchorship. You have to have some Chinese attraction that people want to go to, whether they live in Maryland or they live in South Miami. So education, very important. Language, I want to hear, um, I don't know, um, something uh, from China, some language, some dialect, South China, I'm going to come and I'm going to hear it. I'm going to learn it. Hey, FIU, you know, for crying out loud, could open up a satellite here and where they have just select from their language school. I know those folks. Now, tourism and exchange, these could be anchors. You find cities in China who'd love to start sending people down here just out of curiosity. So then we can have uh, a business there that when people know they want to go to China, let me go find out what I need to know when I want to go to China. All right? So yeah, tourism exchange, that's both ways, huh? We go, they come. Then we want to find a place. Chinese culturally don't go to CVS. They have a cold, they get a Chinese remedy. So we want to have those Chinese remedies available. So I can tell my daughter, oh, you don't feel well? I'm going to go to that Chinese. All right. So walkability, living space, we want it sustainable, must be. Solar wind, don't bring those FPNL things. I love FPNL, but we are at a place where in China they produce very affordable footprint solar and wind energy. Of course, accessible, affordable. You don't want a little business, a little restaurant to have to pay lots of money. Make it affordable. Um, resilient infrastructure. When after a hurricane goes, you don't want to say, who Chinatown disappeared. All right, and uh, appealing. Finally, small business entrepreneurship. You want to have a lab, FIU can help you. You want to start a business in Chinatown, go to them, and they have almost routine, A, B, C, D, E, X, and you get your business started. Uh, we talked about the cornerstones and uh, Lighting, and we're talking about small cities, uh, I mean areas like Zona Rosa in Mexico, where you walk on foot. You leave your car outside of that perimeter, and you walk, or you take the trolley, or you have whatever. Thank you. Can you tell she's fired up? Can you give her? Thank you very much. Some good new ideas there, and take it away. What do we call you guys? We our table number six. Oh! <laughs> our table consisted of true North Miami residents. We did not have any Chinese people at our table. Maybe that's why we came up with what we came up with. When this started, Al Disome said that this is a go. This Chinatown master plan is a go. Because this is moving forward, regardless, the North Miami residents at this table would like to know, how is the city of North Miami going to pay for this master plan should there be no investors? We're paying for it. What about the existing culture in this 96-acre business area? 
Will they be helped to stay? Will they be moved along? Or do you not care? They don't care. What is the timeline for this master plan? Are we looking at months, years? We would like to know, is there a beginning, a middle, an end? There was a presentation that included, included an analog for the Port of Miami. We wanted to state that goods being moved through in containers does not equate in tourists or bodies coming to the city of North Miami. Due to the fact that there is little guidance from the city of North Miami with proper notification or information, someone just got a door hanger yesterday about this master plan, we the residents of the city of North Miami do not feel sufficiently capacitated to provide information reference the design at this time. In keeping with the Chinatown master plan, design should be in line with the culture and the intent of the Chinese people in adhering to principles of feng shui and any other cultural values as stated by architect Ka. As none of us at this table, number six, are of Chinese descent, we cannot provide any specific ideas. This plan is a go. What wishes, desires, dreams do we have for this area? I think what we've wanted for the city of North Miami all along. It would be great in Nomi West to have a movie theater. How about nice restaurants that are not fast food? A gym would be great, a hotel with a spa, and any street art murals we feel would be beneficial to this area. Well, thank you. And is there, is there anything else to add from the group? Is there, is there anything? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we've heard from all the groups, but do you want to take... You want to take us home, or uh, have we? We do have a couple of things to finish off. Okay, there is. Can we can we do that with comments at the end, or what? Did you want to present a design? No. Okay. If you could, I, how about you do this? How about you let us move along, and then we'll come back to your comment. I want to speak. What does the group want to do? What? Okay. Here we go. If she wants to speak, absolutely move forward and speak. Okay? Here we go. Yes, 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 yes. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm glad this is being live streamed to China. Please don't be deceived to think that this that this idea is supported by all the residents here in um, Sunkiss Grove, we will be impacted in a devastating way. We have a suburban lifestyle here, and we'd like to keep it. Know that we were never informed or had any type of uh, participation or feedback in this process until today, which it was approved by the council over a year ago. It is unfair and in bad taste for us to be so neglected. Know that the people, the majority of people in this room are not residents of this side of town and their enthusiasm is not shared by Sunkiss Gold, Sun Gold residents. You are disfranchising your desire to disfranchise a whole group of people who have a legacy and an inheritance in the land and the systems on this tired town is not appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we've recorded, we've recorded uh, the flavor of your... Oh, and a comment here, sure. Yeah, and just to wrap it up, I'm kind of glad the last two Hello, hello, guys, guys. Do we still have part a presentation? Of your, um, oh, you do. Part okay. of your respond just to say this. How do you 
table. I do want to say thank you to everyone that came, and I'm glad. Listen, we are open to everyone's opinion. Either you like it or don't like it, disagree or, or agree. That's fine. The bottom line is something is going to happen on 7th Avenue. Are we all on board with that one? Yes. With that moving forward to say, no, this, your taxpayer is not paying for it, so let's just educate some folks on some of the things. This oh, yeah. is um, the 96 acres. They are privately owned. The city does not own any land. Right now, currently, the CRA is giving money for facade, and what we have done to convert with the Chinatown, we have allocated anywhere from 20 to $30 million that the CRA money, not your tax money, that's going to pay for this project to re-transform 7th Avenue. I have to say, we did not do a good job as far as educate the public, but let me tell you why. It wasn't really intention, but it kind of went intentional. The homeowner's new. Miss, um, my opponent here, um, she had, she knew, no, what I'm saying is we went to the homeowners meeting years and years, you know, months and months ago, so everyone was properly notified. Some of you might have received the thing last night. Um, Miss, Miss, um, Miss Brown, you are the homeowner president. We went to each homeowner, especially my homeowner, and made a presentation. So with that being said, I'm not here to argue with anyone. What it, no, Miss, um... I always like to call it my opponent. Let's just address this. So with that being said, yes, we want movie theaters on 7th Avenue. Just so you know, I think the idea in what I'm gathering tonight and um, the, the few, the handful of residents, and some of them not residents of the city, I didn't want to say this, but they have a problem with the name. So let's just say we remove the name no, 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 no. Let's just say tonight the name Chinatown was not part of the equation, and that's what I'm afraid of. I think we, um, their feeling would have been a little bit different, and I don't want to go down that route. So with that being said, no, the city, the CIA is paying for it. We're already doing business extension. What this will do, the master plan, once passed and adopted, any new businesses that are coming in, they're just going to have to comply just like they do with the downtown master plan. And the existing businesses, we're going to help them to convert with the master plan. Whatever the master plan is. We have a downtown master plan. Any businesses right now coming in into our downtown, they're going to have to do some things that's within our downtown. And if you are coming in within the Chinatown, you're going to have to do things that's within the Chinatown guidelines here. At the end of the day, the residents, what's going to be beneficial to the residents, especially the ones who live in my area, your property taxes. Yeah, and separate evaluation. what more can you want for your kids, your family, is to transform 7th Avenue? I'm glad there are some people. I did not expect everybody to come here on board. I already knew some people that was opposed to it. That's fine. We welcome that. But guess what? At the end of the day, 7th Avenue, something different will happen on 7th Avenue, like it or don't. And for those of you who did not get the proper notice, I do apologize. If you want to learn more, we have a website which we put up. You may not have the information. We are more than happy to give you more information on the vision and the future of North Miami. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. And ask for the evaluation. So we have um, one question I actually had was um, you said you talked about scrapping the name, but um, I was saying instead of making it just purely Chinese, a Chinese initiative, can we make it more representative of the people who are living here, all of the cultures that are already here? I mean, we could have Chinese, we could have multiple. Uh, cultures here, but not only Chinese, that's sort of excluding everybody that's already in the um, part of the demographic. Here you go, dude. All right, everybody. I want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always spirited in these discussions. Um, I'd like to encourage you to fill out the evaluation form to tell us uh, what you think, share your ideas. Don't forget to go to the website. 
fill out the survey if you haven't done so, and you can continue to make comments through the website. Good night, everybody. Again, thank you. Drive safely going home.